Hello everyone and welcome to part two of this rendering car tutorial series from BlenderCookie.com. My name is Jonathan Williamson and picking up from the previous part, we've got a few more shaders to create. Namely, we've got the emblem here on the front of the car, the side of the car emblem, another one on the very back of the car. Uh, we've got the, the side wheel caps here with the Ferrari logo as well. Uh, we've got to add the rubber shader to the windshield wipers. We've got a couple other ones such as the back tail lights, the license plate, and things like that. So just a couple more shaders to create, and then some adjustments to go through all of the compositing, render layers, etc. So to get started, uh, the first one that I want to create is the actual emblem logo here. The emblem is really easy to create. One thing to note is that I've already UV unwrapped it. It's just a simple shape here. You can see it's shrink wrapped to the surface of the car using a shrink wrap modifier applied after a subsurf and then also a solidify modifier placed after the shrink wrap modifier that then just extrudes it out to then give me that depth to it. You can see then it's also just projected or unwrapped from the view just to create a nice flat projection of the UVs. So for the shader, all we need to do is it's going to be very, very simple. It's basically just going to be a glossy shader created um, over a, or basically a glossy plastic. So it's going to be a diffuse shader with the image mapped to it. And then it will be a glossy shader uh, mixed over that with the Fresnel value such that we get that, that plastic effect the same basic way that we did the, um, the light covers here. But since it's transparent, we won't need to add in the shadow rays or anything like that. So what I want to do, let me just give me a little bit more space here by getting rid of the timeline. So with the uh, emblem selected here, let's go over to the shaders. We're going to add a new material to this. And this material is going to be, we'll just call it emblem underscore hood for the front. And let's start by just loading in our texture. So the quickest and easiest way to do that is to use the material properties here with the, you know, the interface here rather than the nodes, because we can just click this, choose image texture and click open, go right into our textures folder. And if we switch into thumbnail view, we can see what it is here. It's this one right here. And we're just going to load that in. And if we go ahead, let's hit escape to leave render view here. And since we don't need both views here to be quite so large, I'm just going to move this one over just a little bit more. I'm going to leave this one fairly small just so that we can use it for selecting objects and such. Uh, and then in this view, we're going to set this to render. So let's just switch this into rendered mode. And if we then also just hit numpad period, we can zoom right to uh, the emblem such that we can see it directly in the viewport. So as soon as it's done building the BVH, this will start rendering right away. Give it just a moment more. While that's going, we can go ahead and start creating rest of the shader components. So I'm just gonna move my material output here. I'm going to go ahead and add in, oh, actually, here you go. So now you can see it's starting to render. So right now it just looks very boring. There's no highlights, but our texture is working. So let's go and hit Shift A. We're gonna add in a shader and a mix. And this mix then we're gonna drop right on top of the diffuse between the diffuse and the material output. And we're going to mix this then with a pure white glossy material. So let's hit Shift A. We're gonna add in a shader and a glossy. We'll just put it right underneath the diffuse. If we then drag this in here, that will mix the two. And right now that just makes it, you know, feel kind of dull as if it has just, you know, it's covered in white, which we don't want. So instead, we're then going to also add in a Fresnel input by hitting Shift A, Input and Fresnel. We'll drag that right up here to keep it nice and clean and organized. One little trick, by the way, if you want to help keep your nodes organized is you can actually scale the nodes. So for example, if you just hit B for box select, drag across these middle three, hit S to scale, you can actually scale these away from each other. Or if you hit X to go along the X axis, you can skew them basically. So you could hit S, X, and zero, and then maybe S and Y, bring them in closer together if you wanted. Or you can select the say that just this one, hit G, Y. So you can just lock them and align them very easily. So if you wanted to say align these three, S, X, or S, Y, and zero, maybe move them down along the Y. So just, you know, you can little alignment tips there. Then we can just drag this for now right into the mix shader and immediately it looks a lot nicer. So now from certain angles, you know, depending on the reflections and such, we'll have the, the white glossy show up. Although right now, you know, this feels kind of dull. You can see it's coming across here, but it's very dull because this glossy roughness value is set to 0.2. So it's very, you know, it's not very reflective. It's just 
get them in a very soft reflection. So let's take this all the way down to say 0 0.01, and that will be much sharper. And immediately you can see that pop in right there. We could even maybe take it to 0 0.005, take it all the way down. You know, I don't like I don't like to set glossies at zero because then it's completely sharp. And since this would be a glossy coating over this Ferrari logo, you know, I don't I don't really want it to have uh, a complete sharp reflection. I just want it to have you know, a pretty sharp reflection. And so that's pretty good. Uh, but we need to do one more thing. And that is, you'll notice that the sides of the logo are just kind of black. And this is because there's not actually any material on them. If you look at the solidify modifier, we have this option under the rim to fill the rim and we can give a material index to the surface, which is this one here for the generated surface, and then the rim. So what I want to do is I want to give a different material to the rim here. The way this is done, this is material index slot zero. And then if we add another material, this is index slot one. So if we drag this down, let's just add in the chrome shader. And immediately you can see the sides are now chrome because my, my rim material right here is set to one. If I were to set this to zero, it would give in the, the, this shader here. But since those sides are not UV'd, it's just basically pulling in the borders of that image and then just extruding them in, which is just black. So we just set that to one and that gives us our chrome on the sides there. So it's just this like chrome emblem then with the Ferrari logo on the front and a nice glossy coating. So that's all fine and dandy, but now let's do the same thing with our other logo here on the side. So we have this one here and we'll pull it down just like this, just about there so that we see the, the glossy or the reflection, you know, covering that. And we're going to give this the same material initially. So let's pull in the emblem hood, but then, you know, obviously I don't want to give this the same UVs. So I want to duplicate this, but before I duplicate this, I also, I would like to just create a group of this material because these shaders here are what define the actual shader, but then this is what's defining the actual texture. So what I would like to do is I'd like to select all of these by hitting B, click, click and drag and across those to select all those. And I'm going to hit control G to make a node group, similar to how we did it with the car paint shader. I, I think, did we do? Oh, no, actually we didn't. So with this, so node groups are really cool because it allows us to reuse specific nodes and keep them all relative. So for example, with this node group, I can then name this by clicking in this field. Let's expand our group here. And we're just going to call this emblem. Now this does a couple things. One, it allows me to re just you know keep this nice and organized. So now if I select this to hit tab, I can then edit these components, hit tab again, and now they're all nice and collapsed. What it also allows me to do is from shift, if I hit shift A and go down to group, I now have emblem as an option. So if I add emblem, I now have a new instance of that group. And if I were to change something in this instance of this group, say set the, the Fresnel to 1.5, leave that, go back into this one, you'll see this one has been changed to 1.5. And so these groups are all using the exact same nodes. And this allows me to reuse this group on multiple materials. So even on, you know, the front emblem now, since these are using the same shader on this one here, uh, if I can select it, oh, I did select it. My bad. All right, select it here. And then you can see the emblem hood, we have the emblem. Okay, so on this side emblem, what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this material by clicking the two and this then will be our emblem underscore side it's still using the same node group but even if i were to delete that node group hit shift a add in a group and an emblem then i could add that to a new one very easily i just drag that in and then you can also see that my diffuse here is linked up to the color now if you wanted this is the, the other cool thing about the node groups is these in or inputs here on the nodes are linked in to this outside. So this border region of the, the group node on the left side is the inputs, on the right side is the output. So if I wanted to say, you know, keep this Fresnel value, this node across multiple shaders, but if, but then I want to add a custom Fresnel value to say just maybe to one or the other. Well, I could just drag this over here, drop it, and now this Fresnel value, which I can now name, is available as an input for any instance of this group. So if I were to then say add a value node over here and feed that in, this would control this IOR value only for this instance of the group and not in other ones. And so this allows you to reuse nodes very easily while keeping the base the same, but adding in custom values of sorts. So if we just click the X, let's remove that. And this is key because we're going to use this, this color, or we could call this the emblem texture like that. 
Now if I tab to leave that, I can then just feed in my color node here, and immediately that loads it in. But this is cool because then I can use a different texture, such as this one right here, and I've already UV mapped that again, and then it just works while still using the same shader here, same shader that's over there, and, and I'm good to go. So then if I just add in my new, my Chrome shader here as well, Chrome, under my modifier, just make sure that my solidify is set to the rim number one, which it is, and there we go. Got my emblem all set up to go using the same shader, but custom t textures for each one. Beautiful. Okay, next let's do the wheel caps right here. So the wheel caps, for one, you can see that these wheels, um, I've set the render resolution or the view resolution down just to save memory. If I were to increase that, then you can see, you know, it looks a lot nicer. But with the wheel caps, uh, let's just select it. Uh, we'll select it over here. It's part of this. So under the material shaders, let's hit tab to go into edit mode. With the wheel cap selected like it is right now, we're going to add a new shader. And this one again is going to be our emblem. So let's choose a new emblem. We're going to duplicate this. And for some reason, that shader is act as if it's removed. But let's just select this, choose the Ferrari emblem. For some reason, it was act as if it were going to be deleted, which we don't want it to be. Uh, and then we're going to duplicate this. And this is going to be our emblem underscore wheel. And on this one, we're going to again use this same shader here because we want it to be act the same, but we're going to use a different image texture. So under textures, let's just choose our, uh, it'll be uh, this one right here, just the Ferrari logo on blank yellow. And then we can click assign. And then I'll hit tab to leave edit mode. As soon as I leave edit mode, then that's assigned and good to go. So again, I've already UV unwrapped that. Um, I'm assuming at this point that you guys already know how to UV unwrap for this tutorial. If you're not familiar with it, uh, just search for UV unwrapping or UV intro on Blender Cookie. And I've got multiple unwrapping tutorials, including a complete introduction to UV unwrapping. So if you're not familiar with that, I, I highly encourage you to go watch those tutorials first. But this tutorial assumes that you're already familiar with those skills. Okay, uh, let's see. Next up, we want to go in. Uh, that's assigned. And since all of these wheels are instanced, uh, we, if we just say give this this bright yellow color right here, something like that, you can see these wheels are all instances of each other. And so that's all automatically applied to all the other wheels. All right, let's see where we're at now. I believe we've already done, we've done the windows. We've done the mirror. Uh, we need to do, ah, let's start with this bottom piece here. We'll leave the tail lights because the tail lights are kind of fun. We'll leave those for last. So on this bottom piece, it's going to be pretty simple. Uh, basically, we want to create a um, kind of a hard plastic of sorts. So we're basically just going to use the, sh the plastic shader again, but we're going to go and create it from scratch. So let's click new. And this is just going to, we're just going to, uh, well, we'll call this, um, uh, back underscore bottom. We'll just name it the same as the mesh here. And let's give this a, we're going to give it a, we'll just use the diffuse. We're going to give this a very dark gray diffuse color here. Say something like that. And then we're just going to mix in our glossy white. So shader, glossy white. You know, imagine that this is kind of a hard plastic bumper that then would get replaced if you were in a fender bender of sorts. Although this is also the bumper here. So this is more of kind of a splash guard. And I'm sure that all of you um, car fans out there that actually know things about cars, don't just try and make them from pretty pictures, uh, could probably, you know, give you an exact name and use and whatnot for that. But I'm not the person to do that. I just make things. Uh, okay, so we're going to mix in the glossy. And we're going to set this glossy. In this case, we don't want this to be a reflective hard plastic. We want it to be much more, uh, more of a matte reflection. And so setting this to leaving this a 0.2 initially will probably be good, although we might actually increase that. But again, we're going to mix this based on a Fresnel value. And we'll just push this right in there. You can then tweak this Fresnel if you want. Um, 1.45 is probably fine for this. You know, if you have, if you know the actual you know, the amount of the glossy coating and what's used in the glossy coating and the actual Fresnel value of that 
glossy coating, then by all means enter this here. Uh, in this case, 1.45, the default, will work quite well. Uh, setting this to, say, 1 is going to add in, you know, almost, well, it'll actually add no glossy. The higher you add this, then the more glossy will get added. So 1.2 is a very weak for nail value, which actually is probably more accurate for this because it's not a very thick glossy coating or anything. And that'll probably work just fine. All right, next uh, is the tailpipes. The tailpipes are just going to be our chrome shader. So we'll just choose chrome right there. And I believe, depending on how I model this, uh, no, never mind. Yeah, so that's good there, just our plain chrome. Uh, next, we've got these little tail lights back here. And these are, it's a little choppy while rendering this. Let me save my file as well. Um, but these tail light pieces back here that you can see are going to be composed of a couple pieces. One, we're going to have this piece right here is going to be our chrome. So we'll just add a new shader. We'll add in our chrome. We'll click assign. And then let's just select this. Let's hide that. Let's select this. We'll hide that. And we can select this ridge here and hide that just so that we can see nothing but this. If we go into local view by hitting numpad slash, we can see just our active mesh. Nice thing about local view versus say just hiding everything else is that local view does not change the render here. Whereas if we were to hide things in the viewport uh, by you know hiding them in object mode, that would actually remove them from the render, which we don't want to do because we want to be able to see these as we're working. But these pieces here um, are going to get a glossy red glass. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm not going to create these just yet. Uh, I'm just going to add the material and this is going to be our glass underscore red because this is what we're going to use for the tail lights here and so I want to uh, show you how to do that in that one uh, for the time being let's just unhide everything and then let's leave edit mode we'll leave local view and then I just want to select this little LED right back in here and we're going to give this if we look for our headlights um, bulb here we're going to just duplicate this material and this is going to be our um, tail light, tail light underscore uh, low bulb. And so, you know, this is more like the brake lights and such. So we'll just leave that kind of amb ambiguous right now. We're going to set the energy down to zero because I don't want it to be on and that'll then be fine. Okay, so assuming that that's good for the time being, let's go and do the license plate just so we can see it real quick. Um, and so we'll just grab this one here. We're gonna add a new shader. This is going to be our license plate. And the license plate, I will encourage you to watch, if you have any interest in a citizen membership, just watch closely uh, because you might find something like a discount code, uh, which by the way, the citizen membership does give you full access to download all the source files, which includes the model. One nice thing about the citizen membership, and I apologies for the uh, promotion here, uh, but the citizen membership, all the source files within that, including this car model, um, are free to use for most anything that you want. You know, we ask that you re don't redistribute them, but if you wanted to say, take this car model and actually use it in something else, you can do that. Um, but on the license plate, the license plate is just gonna be two things. One is the kind of a plastic coating again, which actually for the plastic coating, I think that we'll just, uh, actually no, we're, we're not going to do a plastic coating, instead we're just going to mix a glossy and a diffuse, and then we'll also add in the chrome. So first things first, let's just go into edit mode. Let's go and add in our chrome shader as well. And I'm just going to hit control tab to go into face mode. I'm going to select this face, this face, this face, this face, this face, this one, and then these three on the edge. And then I'm going to hit control I to invert my selection and then just click with the chrome, click assign. So this way I'll have a chrome border around everything here. Uh, and then on the actual license plate one, since when you add a new shader by default, everything in the mesh gets assigned to that shader. So since I only assigned the chrome to these ones, these remaining faces still have the license plate assigned to them. So now I can just add in a image texture node, choose image texture. And again, this is already UV unwrapped. Now I'll just click open, go into the textures, and underneath my license plate right here, I can load that in, connect that there. Let's just rotate around so we can see this. You can see we've got our little CG Cookie logo and whatnot on here. And that ought to be just fine. 
uh, be sure to be watching. Uh, and then we also have the, let's add in a shader and a glossy. And we're then just going to add, um, yeah, let's just add the glossy to this and that will just kind of brighten this up. So we'll go to shader and add, add that on top here. Drop this one to the top, that'll push that down to the bottom. Um, actually, you know what? No, actually I don't like that at all. Instead, let's do our standard uh, mix. So we'll just do shader, mix, pull these in, and then we should be able to just mix those with a Fresnel to again just give us the highlights on here. So then shader, or excuse me, input, and Fresnel, and drop that in there. There we go. So now from this angle, you're not going to see much, but from, you know, if you were to rotate this around to then get nice highlights on here, you can see it kind of coming through right there. And we, since this, you know, these get pretty beat up, they've got actually a pretty good uh, coating of uh, basically a, you know, a resin or something of the sorts to kind of keep them durable. So let's just increase this state at like 1.6. That will make that coating stand out a little bit more. Okay. So that is that. Um, so now for the fun one, and that is the tail lights. So on the tail lights here, let's zoom into this here. Let me first show you how it's composed. So first we have an outer shell that then covers the inner shell, and this outer shell is composed of a smooth outer surface, which then is raised out on the outside here something like this, and then the inside is ribbed on the inside here, but then also the, the outside of, of this center ring is also ridged. Now right now it's maybe not quite strong enough, so we're just going to make it a little bit stronger. We're going to select all of these edge loops by just Alt, Shift, right clicking, like this. And then we're just going to make them a little bit stronger, say something like that. Maybe even further. Okay, yeah, that ought to be fine. So there's that then. Um, and then on the inside, if I just uh, select the inside piece, uh, it's basically going to be chrome within these LEDs plus a bulb right here and the bulb right there uh, and then whatnot. So this together will then give us a nice effect. So first on this inside one, uh, let's increase that resolution so it's nice and smooth. And on the material, we're going to give it our chrome shader. And then we will also um, add in some LEDs. So on the LEDs, we just want to, let's just select this piece and select this piece and this piece and this piece. And then we're gonna hit control I just to select all of these. We're gonna add a new shader. We're going to just, um, add a new material to this, and this is going to be our tail lights underscore LEDs underscore reverse. And then we're just going to give this a glossy shader and an emission shader that then we will mix together. So with the mix, we'll just pull this in here. So then we can add in an emission which we'll pop in right there. Immediately these will turn on, although you won't be able to see them just yet. We'll also add in a shader, or excuse me, a glossy shader, about like this. And this way, the glossy shader, which we're gonna give a glossy of say 0 0.01, is essentially going to be chrome. And let's now just assign those just in case. And then by adjusting this mix, we can turn these on and off. So let's just leave local view now. Let's select the outer shell and let's hide that so that we don't see it in the render. And there you can see that that is now chrome, essentially. And our tail light, or our 
the LEDs are also basically chrome. You can just kind of, you know, imagine they're kind of a reflective glass of, of sorts. We can maybe make them a little less reflect to maybe 0.1. Um, and that'll be fine. So then we're also going to give, we've also got this other set of LEDs right here that we're going to also give the same basic shader. So it'll be our tail lights underscore reverse. So this basically just, you know, this just allows us to turn them on and off. So if we set this to one, all of a sudden they're on and then, you know, we'd be able to mix them or add a glow within the compositor uh, to make them look like they're really glowing and vibrant and awesome. So setting that to zero, we can turn them off. Okay. Then this inside bulb here, or this shell, we're going to give our glass shader. So let's just find our glass and click assign, leave edit mode. And now that is glass, you can see it coming through. Then lastly, we also have the bulb right in here, this piece right here. And again, we're gonna give this our, uh, we'll do the, for this one, I wanna be able to add, you know, this would be the main strength. So we're going to give it a slightly different shader. Uh, we might even just use one of our previous ones. Yeah, I think we'll probably just use, well, no, just for the time being, let's just give it this same tail lights reverse one. Uh, you know, they'd all turn on at the same time. Uh, but if you needed to give it, you know, a different one, you obviously could at any point to make it a little easier to control. Or if you want to be able to turn on just one and not the other, you know, you can definitely do that any way that you need. Oh, I need to leave that mode there to see those changes applied. There we go. So now you can see that's turned on all fine and dandy and cool. You can see that that inside is also ribbed to get a little bit more variation in there. And that should be good. Okay, so let's turn that off now. And then I want to do the outer shell. So let's hit Alt H to unhide that. And then we're going to select this. And we're going to first give this our glass clear. And immediately you can see that it looks kind of cool. And over the sides here, it looks awesome. But for, you know, part of this, we want to be red. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit tab to go into, oops, not on that one, on this one. Here we go. Let's go into local view. And then I'm just gonna select this bottom side, so back side here. And then we're going to just grow the selection up to right there and we can see it on the inside as well. We'll need to change it on the inside. Um, actually, you know what, maybe this would be a little easier. Let's select everything. And then um, we can see this line right here is where we want it to stop. So let's just hit uh, Z to go into wireframe, hit C to bring up our circle select, and then holding down Alt we, and left click, we can then deselect those. Then from the inside, we can go in and deselect those specific loops that are still partially selected like that. There we go. And now we're going to give this a red shader. So let's add in a new one here. And this will be our glass underscore red. So glass red, which we haven't really done anything with yet. You know, right now it's just a diffuse shader. So that looks really crappy and boring. But let's grab our glass shader here. And what I want to do, we can see this one here. I want to go ahead and group these. So let's just group this and this will be our glass. So this way we can reuse this glass shader and adjust the glass shader across, across the board, no problems. Uh, and this, you know, again, makes it really easy to adjust things. So then let's actually go over to our red glass. So we'll select this piece again in our glass red. Let's delete the diffuse shader. We're gonna add in, hit Shift A and the group and choose our glass. So now we can just drag that right into there. And again, that becomes our clear glass. You can see that the highlights here look awesome. Uh, but we don't have a color input here. So we'd like to be able to adjust the color of this glass just on this one instance. So let's hit tab to edit the group. And I'm just gonna choose the glass shader right here. We're just gonna grab the, grab the color, just drag it in there. And we'll hit tab. Because now I can adjust this color very easily. In fact, I can just adjust the color right here without actually affecting the rest of it. Check it out. So if I just give this, say, kind of an orangish red, you know, something right about in there, all of a sudden it looks pretty cool. However, um, if we look at this, we can see that we're not getting, all of a sudden we, we get these red 
uh, the red glass right here, which we don't actually want. You know, we want this to show up kind of white because it's a it's a plastic. You know, most tail lights are made from plastic. They're not actually glass. Or if, if this were actually red glass, this would be correct. But since this is red plastic, we want this to show up white. So what we need to do is we need to enhance our glass shader a little bit, or our plastic shader, uh, to be a little bit more pronounced. And you know, I'm just leaving this glass because it's fairly generic and we can keep it in most cases. But for this one, um, and actually for both of these tail lights, what we need to do is make this a little bit better. So since this glass is used, used elsewhere, um, let's actually look. Maybe we need to do a little cleanup work. Let's select this glass. Here we go. Here's the headlights cover. This is the glass that we want, actually, where it's the shadow ray plus this glass. So let's actually, let's group this. We'll just control G, group this, and this is going to be our um, clear plastic. Okay? Because then we could actually use this back in here. So let's select this one. Our, our regular glass here, let's call this... Um, Let's see, does this, I think this one uses our regular glass. It does. Okay, so this is our regular glass. So on this one, we actually don't want to use that. We actually want to use our headlights cover right there because this is that clear plastic. So that'll look a bit better. Then on the this one, we want this to be our glass underscore red. Again, I'm just going to leave it named glass just because it's easy. Um, but instead of using this group, we instead want to use our clear plastic group. So then we'll tie that in there. And there you can see it's white highlights. So it looks much better. And then on this, let's just pull this glass shape color in there. And this then allows us to edit this color right here without affecting the rest. So this would just be that kind of reddish orange right about there. And voila, it looks awesome. So that then is our tail light cover. Now it looks like I might have missed a couple of um, rings along the inside. So we're just going to, well, let's see, did I? Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and grow this. Let's grab that piece and then we'll go in three more. So we'll choose these like that. Then we'll click assign on those. Just bring them in to line up with that ridge. Now if I leave edit mode, you'll see those changes applied. There we go. Yeah, that lines up much nicer. We could go ahead and select our LEDs if we wanted to turn those on. Just set that to one, and there we go. So now you can imagine if those had a glow applied to them and were really strong and looked awesome, that would be really, really awesome. You can increase that even higher if you want and get it a little bit better, but that's up to you. All right, so we'll save that. Now let's do the same thing on this, these back tail lights. Right here, we can see that it's a series of LEDs with then a cover that has thickness up, added to it. So let's go in here. Let's select this. And we're going to give this a new shader. This is, go or not a new shader, a new slot. And this is going to be our, uh, we'll just do our headlights cover. Or no, this is actually our glass red. So we'll click assign on that. Then we're going to hit control I to invert that. This is going to be our LEDs. And we're going to give this our same tail light LEDs. Assign that, okay, and then this piece right here, we want to be chrome. So let's select this, just alt right click to select, I just selected that, and then I can hit control plus a couple of times to grow the selection, then we'll just make this chrome, click assign, leave edit mode, and immediately this should start to pop up, and right now it has not, uh, oh, that's because I didn't add in the multiple slots. So this piece, we'll add in another slot. We'll make this one our uh, glass underscore red. Click assign. And now that should look good. Uh, no. Why does that? Oh, it's just because it was getting a weird, weird reflection from the background. But it actually does, in fact, look good. Okay. So now let's see. Let's just double check these bottom tail lights as well. They should be good. They've got the glass red. They look great. They're obviously in a lot of shadow, but they look good. Okay, so I believe that is all of our shaders now. So what we're ready to do now is to actually go in and render it and do our compositing. So first of all, on... Oh, actually we need to do 
Well, a couple things. So at this point, we have most of this done. But what we don't have is very good compositing control. Because what I want to do is once we go into the compositing, if we just go switch over to compositing nodes, click use nodes, find our nodes here, also enable the backdrop, control shift click on the render layers here, that'll automatically add the viewer. And then we can see our image here. I'm rendering fairly large at the moment, so let's actually maybe take this size down. And see that we'll just take this down to say 50%. Um, but then what we want to do is we want to have full control over our various layers here. And the way that we get full control over our different layers is by using render layers. So what I want to do is I want to separate all of my lights out where on one layer I can have my diffuse light, on another layer I can have my key light, another one just the, the soft or the, the background, and then maybe one with also just the uh, the softbox or backlight or whatnot. And actually we're going to add in a backlight because right now we don't actually have one. So first of all, let's start organizing things. So on layer one, we are going to put just the car. So we've got the car, everything right now is on layer one. Well, we got something on layer two. Okay, we can see these things are on layer two. So let's just start on layer two, we're going to have our background and our camera, which we already have. On layer 11, I like, to, I'm, I like to put my lights on these layers down here. So on layer 11, we're going to have our softbox or lightbox or whatever, because um, it's not actually a softbox as somebody actually was kind enough to point out. Um, and I didn't mean that sarcastically. I actually meant that legitimately. Thank you. Um, we're going to have our fill light and our lightbox here. So let's find our fill and our light. And we're going to select them. We're going to hit M and move them to layer 11. Then on layer 12 is going to be our key light. So let's grab this, move this to layer 12. Layer 13 then is going to be our front lights. Or actually, oh, uh, we actually don't have our front lights yet. So one of the things that I also wanted to add on this is since you know this is a very good focal point of our image, I want to have uh, you know control over that. So we're probably going to add in some front lights here, but we won't do that just yet. Um, let's just leave layer 13 empty. Uh, actually, we'll leave both those empty. Okay. So let's, with everything that we have now, let's go and set up our initial compositing. So let's go over to our render properties here. And toggle down that, toggle down that, uh, toggle down this. That'll be fine. Okay. Uh, let's open up our layers tab. So inside the layers, this first layer, we're going to call all the key light. So this will be key light. And on this layer, we're going to have to render some of these uh, one at a time because what the render layers are going to do is give us full control over how things get mixed together. So on the key light though, we're going to enable just layer one uh, for the scene. Uh, no, that's not correct. Uh, let's see, key light is on layer 12. So key light we want we want both of these layers enabled, and then we're going to enable this layer and this layer for the key light. Next, uh, we also we want just the AO here. Um, AO, if you're using Blender 2.62 official, AO is not yet available. Uh, we are going to make use of it, but again, with this um, series, I am using uh, the Blender 2.63 beta, which if you go to builder.blender.org, slash download, you can download the daily development builds with the official configurations. And 2.63 is actually in what's called Bcon 4, which means that all features are frozen. So there's no additional features are getting added. And uh, it basically it's um, for bug testing right now and fixing bugs only. So the actual official uh, Blender 2.63 will be available in fairly short measure. And okay, so that's all we need for that. So this is going to be the first layer. Next, we're going to add in another layer, and this is going to be our background. On the background, we are going to render, um, actually, uh, for the key light here, uh, yes. So for the background, we're only going to render layer two, but we also need to enable the scene layers here. So these layers are global between all layers, all render layers. These layers are specific to that render layer. So um, unfortunately, Unless you use scenes, which is a little annoying because then you have to link your objects between the scenes, we're going to have to adjust these for each time that we render, but that's okay. Um, 
we'll, I'll walk you through each of those. So that's the background. Then we also want our, I'm going to call it a softbox, but it's our softbox plus fill. And this one, our softbox plus fill, is only going to render the car on layer 1 and layer 11 with the softbox. Okay? So and what these mean, if you're not familiar with them, basically these are the renders or the layers that will actually contribute to the render and be calculated. These are only the ones that are going to show up. So on this one, since I only have this one enabled, it means it's only going to render the background and the reflection of the car, but the car itself won't actually be there. Uh, and let's see, on background, we... I'm trying to think with the lighting. Um, yeah, I probably want just the key light and probably the fill. So we'll go ahead and enable that. Okay, so let's go ahead and render these one at a time now. Uh, let's also go ahead and add these into the compositing view. So in the compositing view, let's just duplicate our render layer here. And we'll just duplicate this three times. So this first one is going to be our key light. Next will be our background. Next will be our softbox and fill. Okay. And let's also check one more thing, and that is to make sure that we're doing a transparent background. So underneath the film option, we just want to make sure that transparent is enabled. This way, when we, when we render only the car and such, it will actually show up transparent everywhere else so that we can then blend these together very nicely. So with the key light, again, we want to render um, in the scenes. We want our car. We want the reflections from the background in the car. You know, otherwise, we, it would look a little weird. And then we also want to render the actual key light itself which, if I remember right, I believe, um, I'm going to click this button as well, which unlinks these layers from these layers. So now in this viewport, I can view whatever layer I want without adjusting these ones. So I believe key light, yeah, key lights in layer two. Okay, so that's good. So now let's just go in here and we're just going to, if we were to click render image right now, unless we, are well, actually, okay. By default, this button is not checked. And if you then click the just image button to render, it would render all three layers. But since we need to adjust these scene layers for each one, we don't want to do that. So instead, you can either click this and then click the render image, and that will only render the selected one. Or you can uncheck that, and you can just click the render image button right here for each render layer, because this then will only render that render layer. So let's just click this, and that then should load these up. And it will take just a moment to start, but I've already built the BVH. So that should be fine, I believe. There we go. Now it's starting. Okay. Um, maybe I might have messed up my BVH. Looks like I probably did. So what I'm going to do now while this is rendering, I'm just going to pause the recorder and let that go, and I'll be back with you in a moment. Okay, and here we are. You can see that this has now rendered. Here's the render right here. I let it run for about 600 samples or so. Um, and this is a good start. So now what we would do is I would go ahead and do the same process for each one of these images, or each one of the layers, adjusting the scene layers for each one. So for example, on the background, then I would go in and I would keep both of these enabled, but then I might also enable the um, key light. Oh, you know what? I actually made a mistake here and actually I don't have my key light enabled in this. So you can see here, I didn't enable the key light layer here and so it didn't actually render it as you can see you know it looks pretty dark so I would actually want to go in then and render this again so I would save this click render and that may or may not it will probably need to rebuild the cache again but uh, regardless that's the way that it works so again this is kind of annoying that we have to do it this way the other way you can do it is you can create scenes for each one of these but again that means you have to link all your objects and it's just kind of cumbersome um, so personally, I, you know, once I've got all the tweaking done, I don't mind adjusting these layers for each one of these one by one, as long as I remember to do that. What that does mean is that you can't simply just click hit F12, let it render and then be done. However, okay, at this point, though, we're going to do one more thing. And that is, you know, for the sake of compositing and for the sake of preventing crashes, and actually, I should have just let that continue rendering. Um, we are going to save all of these images out for each layer to what's called an open layer EXR or um, open or excuse me a multi-layer EXR file and this will then store all of these layers including all the passes inside that single file and 
what we actually want to do is we actually want to render all of these and then save out that multi-layer EXR because it will actually save them all out, uh, all of these in a single file. So what I'm going to do at this point um, is actually stop for a moment because I want to render all of these, but I've already rendered them on the previous card. So we're just going to use those for the actual um, compositing here. But I want to set up a couple more things for you. So, you know, I've already got these saved out. If we look in our renders here, um, well, actually, let me add them in. Um, so I'll do that here in a moment. But yeah, I've already got all of the multi layers saved out that we, then we're going to use as compositing. And this will then just allow us to, you know, if we crash, to not lose all of our renders. But at this point, what I want to do is I want to set up a couple more lighting things. Currently, if we look at our final render, which we can find uh, right here, you'll see a couple things on this. Number one, you'll see we get, get some nice highlights here in the grates, which just add a little bit of interest. And that's because I've got three little lights set up that are directed at these, which also help direct at this. The other thing you'll notice is I've got this subtle kind of light wrap around the sides here. It's because I've set up a backlight. So let's go in now and set up a backlight. So in Blender here, uh, we'll, yeah, we're just going to go ahead and cancel this as soon as it packs all that. I'm going to let it write the BVH just so that if I want to render again, I don't need to. Okay, there we go. So now you can see that's actually showing up much better. So let's cancel this now. And we're going to add in our backlight. So the backlight, we're just going to add in on another layer. And the way that it's going to work Let's get into our 3D view here. Let's go to top view. Let's hit shift C to recenter our 3D cursor. And then we're going to add in a new plane. So mesh plane. And we're going to scale it up to be about three times its width. So we'll hit uh, S, X, and three. And then we'll just scale it way up like this. We're gonna rotate it around the X axis, 90 degrees. So hit R, X, and then 90. And then we're gonna position it uh, roughly around the back of the car pointing at the camera. So if I just say move it back here about like this, rotate it around something about there and then go into camera view I want to position it such that it's um, filling the entire camera view basically just you know so it wraps around the car. So I'm then just going to scale this up uh, maybe position it right about in there. We'll have to test this and then let's go and give it a new shader and this new shader is going to be our light underscore back I'm gonna give it a subtle blue hint okay and then we're gonna set this to be an emission we're gonna make the strength really high at like 40 and then we're gonna disable it in the camera view and for glossy because I don't want it to show up in reflections I just want it to light this the object so we'll disable the glossy and then let's go ahead save our file and switch into render view let this go keep going almost done and there we are okay so now you can see uh, we've got some light that's coming around the sides here which looks fairly cool uh, if we then go in here and this is a little slow while I'm doing this but if you now you know from the top view you can now move this light around and kind of see how it'll affect it. So as we move it more over here, it's going to get more light on this side. So now you can see it's almost illuminating this entire side, which I don't want. So I just want to move this back somewhere in there. Maybe we'll scale it up just a little bit more and wait for this just okay. So now you can see it's wrapping all the way around there. Maybe rotate this around just a little bit, get a little bit more here on the front side. There we go. That starts to look good. Okay. And then what we're going to do, we're going to hit M and we're going to move this to layer 15 right here so we can render it all on its own. And the other thing that we're going to do is for this render, we really don't want, and apologies, this is being very nice and slow. Uh, you, you will have noticed that as I was rendering this, let's just in the viewport here, we can hide our different layers, maybe just like this. So it's just the car and then the backlight. Uh, let's go over to the renders. We're going to add a new render layer, and this is going to be our backlight. And this one is only going to render this layer and this layer. So it's the car and the backlight only. 
However, once this finishes building the BVH, you'll notice something, and that is the windows obviously look terrible. And there's really nothing that we could do to get rid of those windows if we were to leave them like they are. You know, we don't want that crazy backlight there. We just want it to kind of wrap around the car, just add a little extra depth, help it pop from the background. So what we're gonna do is for this layer only, we're gonna give a second shader to the window. So if we select the windows, let's go over to the materials, and we're just going to change this out. We're just gonna hit X on this, and then we're gonna add a new shader to this. And this is going to just be our diffuse underscore black. And basically what I want, I don't want this to contribute hardly at all to the result. You know, maybe we want just a little bit there because that's that's good, but we're just going to give this a very dark diffuse, say something like that. If we don't want completely black or it'll literally be black, black, they won't get any light whatsoever. But if we set this to be a really dark gray, it won't really contribute to the end result once we start adding things in, but you can see some subtle light shading there. So that's all good. Uh, and then we're going to click the F here, such that if we change this back to the glass, we don't lose that upon saving. So now we'll be able to render this just by itself uh, without losing anything else. So that's that's great. Um, I did notice we're also missing a shader right in here. This inside on the car panel behind, oh, right, behind the grates like this should be black. So if we go in here, go into face mode, we can then just select all of these faces, maybe just grow the selection. See I'm missing a couple right in here. And we're just going to give these our rubber shader. These, and then also these here, like that. Oh, not that one. Just going, sorry for the delay here. And one last one right there, okay. We're gonna add a new shader to this, and this is going to be our rubber just click assign. That way we don't get that red there. We want that to be black. There we go. So that looks much better. Okay, so that's going to be our backlight. Next, we're going to add in one more set of lights, which we will put on layer 13, because I don't believe we have anything on layer 13 at the moment. Uh, oh, let's leave local view. There we go. Yeah, so on 13 right here, or this one here, we're going to add in uh, one more and I guess actually I I could actually put my the backlight on layer 13 but I don't really care so on layer 13 here let's also enable the car we're going to add in one more set of lights so let's hit shift a add in a mesh and a plane and this one we're going to scale way down and then we're going to scale it along the y-axis make it fairly thin like that rotate it over bring it over like this and these ones these are going to be what are called the front lights. And these are just going to be used to help add in a little extra focus to the front grates here. So on these, I'm going to do, you know, I'm going to disable them in the camera view. I'm also going to enable and add a new shader. So this will be our light underscore front. We're going to set this to be a emission. We're going to set the strength to say about three. So you can start to see it showing up right there. Let's also set the color to be a subtle blue. So again, it's since it's kind of a, um, a complementary light, I want it to be a cool light. I don't want it to really draw focus to anything. Uh, and I'm also going to disable it in the camera so that we don't see it there. And then we're just going to uh, make these fairly small. Maybe bring it up just a little bit, scale it down just a bit. And then from the top view, I'm going to hit Alt-D, bring this over, rotate around, and we're going to add three of them total, focusing in on these points. So then another one right over here, about like that. And so that's just gonna help bring in, you can see how it's kind of focusing in on the grate, just adds more interest there. And we're gonna move these then to layer 13, and we're going to create one more render layer. So this 
moving moving things to new layers during rendering is not a very good idea and I don't encourage you to do what I just did but let's add in one more render layer and these are going to be our front lights and this is going to render the car and only then the actual lights themselves okay so that's all perfect there and we are ready to then start rendering everything except one thing um, on the key light pass we're also going to render um, one more pass in here and that is um, that pass that I want to render is the um, here you can see most of these have um, AO and such uh, or all of these the only ones we need AO on is the key light and the background so we'll enable those but then on the key light also we're also going to enable the normal pass because the normal pass is actually going to allow us to do some kind of relighting and let's also just for kicks let's also enable this on the normal pass as well or on the the softbox pass so we'll actually do some kind of relighting tricks using the normal pass and at this point we are ready to render everything out okay so now at this point we're going to assume that i have now rendered each one of these layers individually at which point now keep in mind that i haven't actually rendered these because we're not we're going to use the ones i've already saved out uh, rather than take the time to re-render them again for the exact basically the exact same result uh, but assuming that this is all done the way that you then after rendering all these out what you're going to then do is in the uv image editor you're going to take your final render result and you're going to go to image and save as image and you're going to then save this as a multi-layer open EXR and include the RGB alpha channel and then you're going to save this inside renders layers and you've got your Ferrari 599 GTB layers.exr you can see it's about 40 megabytes so it's fairly large um, but what that'll then do is actually save out all of the passes of every single render layer that you have right here in a single result and to show you that let me then just load in uh, uh, add in an image input we'll click open we're gonna go into renders and layers and you can see the one that I've already saved out so let's open that and you'll see in here as soon as it'll take a moment you can see we have layers and here's the combined one that is the combined result of all of these nodes as they were fed into the composite output so it's what whatever is fed into here is that combined result but then you'll also notice that we have all of our different layers here. We've got the softbox and fill, we've got the key light, the backlight, and the background. On each one of these, then, we also have the render passes. So this is why the multi-layer EXR is awesome. Um, the main thing, you know, basically this will save anything. When you save it manually, it'll save what's ever in your render memory. So if you've rendered out all of these and then go to render result and save it, it'll actually save out each one of these even though it actually looks like it's only saving the active one that you're currently viewing it'll save all of them it's awesome so at this point we can actually cut these connections we can just move these over here and we're actually gonna just with them second we're gonna hit H to hide them and just move them over there the only reason we're gonna keep them here is just in the case that we wanted to re-render a specific pass and then save out a new version of the the EXR uh, for you know tweaking or whatever but at this point we're ready to begin our compositing so on the compositing, we're going to do a few things. First thing, our first step is to re-add all of the layers together. In order to do that, let's first choose our key light. Then we're going to duplicate this image input. We're going to change this one then to be our softbox plus fill. Then this one is going to be our, uh, this will be our backlight. And then this one will be our background. And on this render, I've actually got the the front lights combined in with my uh, my key light here. You can see the, fo the lights focus there. So rather than doing them as a separate layer, they're combined. You can do it one way or the other. If you really want to draw focus of this, you know, go ahead and do them separately. It's totally up to you. Um, okay. So in order to combine all of these back together, you can see each one of the different results. Here's our softbox only. Here's our backlight within the black windows. You can see that this is pretty noisy. Um, I needed to re-render this again. Unfortunately, I didn't do it. Um, but this is actually making, the backlight renders very noisily, but by making use of a new feature that again, is currently in 2.63 beta. It's not in Blender 2.62. Um, I know anytime that I tend to bring up things like that, I tend to get a couple of questions on, you know, why can't I do this or why can't I do that? And generally it's because you're using an older version. So if you can't find the feature that I'm demoing here, use you know be sure to upgrade to the 2.63 beta as long as you're comfortable with the development builds it's pretty stable right now 
I don't encourage, you know, I encourage you to be careful with it. So if you're using a for a crucial project, be sure to save out a different version of that. But this new feature is called Clamp, and Clamp is really awesome because it allows us to basically detect really, really bright pixels, such as the really bright noise that you see around the edges here, and reduce those. So by setting this to say 0.8 or something, we could actually reduce all of these, so to just remove these really bright things like the fireflies, it'll basically remove those. So it's basically a firefly reduction tool. Setting it, you know, the lower you go, the the less or the lower the, th the threshold is for the bright pixels. So setting this to like 0.01 would basically make your entire image really, really dark. So, but generally I found that 0.8 to 0.9 works really well to remove the bright pixels without sacrificing much of your lighting quality. So I apologize for the noisy uh, render here, but you know, it would actually be nice and clean and smooth. So for the compositing, we want to combine all of these back together. Well, what we're gonna do is we're just going to add these two together and add, we'll actually add basically all these together. And then we will do a few other tricks. So first let's hit shift A, we're going to add in a color and a mix. The mix then, let's just feed in this node and this node. And just so that we can see what's happening, let's hit control shift click to feed this in and immediately we see that. Well, we don't want that. Instead, we want to add these together. We want to take basically the bright points of this and add it to that so that we get nice even illumination. When we do that, we just change this over to add and immediately we have the combined result of both of them. Then you can adjust this strength here to find what you like for the good in between. In this case, I'm gonna go ahead and set this to say 0.3. Then let's duplicate this add node. We'll just drop it on itself. And then we're going to feed in the backlight. So we'll drop that in there. And immediately it adds it on. And you know, you can increase this. So setting this all the way to one, we get the full backlight strength. I'm gonna take this down to say like 0.6. Next, we're going to then add an alpha over to add this over the background. So I'm just gonna hit Shift A and a color and an alpha over. This allows us to basically layer two images together based on the alpha channel. So we'll just drop that on there. And then let's pull in the background right here. And this will automatically detect the alpha channels. Now you'll notice that when I did that, well, we just have background. This just means that I need to uh, swap these results. So let's just drag this one to the bottom and voila, we have the car overlaid on the background. This is why it was important to enable the transparent option underneath the film, because if we didn't do that, these would just have a solid black background, such as like you see here. But now if we enable this option here, these are actually transparent, as you can see there, and now there by enabling the transparency draw option. So these are all transparent, then this one's solid, and so we can automatically just take the transparency of these and drop it on top of the background. Okay, all fine and dandy. Next thing that I want to do is to get a little bit more, um, or excuse me, uh, next let's actually, let's make use of the AO. So right now, this is kind of cool, but we don't have a lot of depth in, you know, like the shadowed areas and such. Uh, as, you, as many of you may be familiar with, AO basically allows us to do self-shadowing. So if we just uh, drop our AO channel here into the viewer, we can see what it looks like. It's basically just, you know, these bright areas in with these kind of shadowed areas. It looks Personally, as a modeler, I love the AO look. I just think it looks really cool. It's awesome, etc. cetera. Um, so what we wanna do is we want to then take this and use these darker areas to darken aspects of this image. The way that we do that is we, we multiply the AO times this image. So let's hit Shift A and the color and a mix. We'll drop that on there. And we're gonna change the blending mode over to multiply. Then let's just drag in our AO right here and see what we get. Okay, uh, well, Cool, I mean, if you combine these two, you can see that the, this looks a lot nicer, it's got a lot more depth to it, but we've lost our background completely. And this is because this AO, which by the way, you can grab, you can toggle between the viewers through here by just control clicking on them again, or control shift clicking. This AO does not have the background here. And so this basically just detecting the solid black here and saying, okay, the background is black. So what we wanna do is we wanna take the AO of the background here and combine it with this AO. So we're just gonna use another alpha over right here. Let's just duplicate this one, drop it down there, and add an alpha over with this AO on top of the background AO. Uh, maybe we need to reverse those. Uh, oh, K 
Okay, the AO does not actually have the alpha channel. For whatever reason, it does not have the alpha channel. So we need to just grab our alpha channel right here and say, okay, we want to combine these two based on this. So let's just grab this, drag it into there, and now we have a nice combined AO. Okay, and now we can just drop this into there to replace that, and we now have a nice AO multiplied background. So you can compare these two between that and that. It's not a huge difference, but you can see there's just a little bit more depth in areas like, you know, with the, the glass meeting the panel here, um, in the wheels, etc. So it's, it's subtle, but you can, of course, strengthen it. If you wanted to, you can make it up to 1.5, make it a lot stronger, 0.5, take it a lot less, whatever floats your boat there. So let's give us a little bit more room now. And now we have our nice combined image, but we want to take this a bit further. For one, we want to add this nice glow effect. You know, right now, these headlights, I'm sorry, but they look like crap. For one, it's got, it's kind of jaggedy. They don't really look like they're on. It just looks like this weird kind of hot spot. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the glare node to really make these awesome. Um, so let's just hit Shift A, add in a filter and a glare. On this glare, let's just drop it right on there. And we're going to change, first of all, you can see the streaks that it's added immediately. For this, we're going to do this in two layers. We're going to do one, which is just the fog glow, just makes the lights look like they're glowing. And then we're going to do a streaks as well, and then we're going to combine the results. For this first one, we want to do just a fog glow. And that just gives us this really nice kind of glow. It softens those immediately. Uh, if we adjust the size here, we can make that larger or smaller. Nine is the maximum, which is what we're going to use. And we've got the threshold. So the threshold is, you know, how bright does the pixel need to be in order to contribute to the glow? We want to keep it at 100% because we only want these really bright ones. And then the mix allows us to say, all right, negative one is the original result only. One is the glow only. So we're going to leave this at one initially. Um, but then we're going to change out because in the end, what I want to do is I want to take just the glow and add it to the rest. So actually, let's just leave that at one now. And then I want to, right now, you know, it's got this yellow color, which is cool, but just to fit in with the mood, kind of with this kind of cool red and cool colors, I, or cool complementary colors with the bright red, I want to change the color of this. So we're going to add in a color balance. So go to color, color balance, drop that right on there. And under the gain for the main color, we're just going to change that over to a blue, something like that. And you can see immediately how that's changed the color of the glow. So to me, that feels a lot nicer, feels a lot more modern, and I just kind of I like the way that it's feeling. Next, I'm also going to soften this a little bit by just adding in a, a filter and a blur. On this blur, we're going to change the type over to a Gaussian. Let's get a nice soft blur. And to, in order to compensate for the fact that I may want to render this in multiple sizes, I'm going to use a relative glow. This way it uses a relative percentage to the image size rather than an actual pixel size. Because if I use this pixel size here, if I were to render this out at 200% of the original size, this glow then would need to be tweaked. And I don't want to tweak this every time I re-render a different size. I want it to just automatically compensate. You know, if I need to go in and adjust it further after that, fine. But I wouldn't like to have to. So I'm going to use this relative. And I'm going to set this pretty small. I'm going to set this at like 0.5 and 0.5, so half of a percent. And you can see that just glows just a little bit. And then since this is an, um, you know, the aspect ratio is kind of along the y, so it's y times or x times the y, whatever. I'm going to use the aspect ratio correction of y, and that way you can see it keeps the original shape rather than distorting it down. Okay, and that then will be pretty good, I think. Um, let's go ahead and do, uh, let me think about this for a moment. Yes. Okay. So now we're going to add this to the original result. So we're going to just duplicate this multiply, drop it over there, change this over to add, and then we're going to take the result of this multiply node and we're going to drop it into the top here. So this way, this one will be overlaid on top of this one. And immediately we have our nice glow. Cool. All right. Well, now I want to do another one of these with the streaks. So let's just duplicate this. And actually, you know what? We're instead, we're going to just duplicate this entire setup right here. So we're going to duplicate both of these. Oh, one moment. Okay, there we go. Just recovered from the crash. Um, so we're just going to grab all of these nodes and we're going to hit Shift D 
move them down along the y-axis just to duplicate them. And then on first thing is let's go ahead and connect this here and then this, whoops, this one right here and view that in the viewer so that we can see the results, which should be the exact same thing that we saw here. But now we're going to change a couple things. For one, we're going to get rid of the blur because we don't need it. If you want to delete a node while maintaining the connection through here, you can press Control X rather than just X and that will maintain this connection. And then we can move this over here just to stay nice and clean. Then we're going to change this glare type over to streaks like we originally saw. And for these, um, you know, you can do these streaks any number of ways. You can do a lot of streaks, or you can do just like a single streak, something like that. You know, this is pretty common in car renders, so maybe we'll do something like that. Uh, you can really do whatever works best for you. We've got a few things we can change here. The iterations will be kind of the help the quality of it. It'll make a little bit more, more subtle uh, uh, gradient here. We're gonna keep the mix at one, the threshold at one, use the streaks here the angle offset is fine um, you can use the fade value then here to adjust kind of the strength of it we don't want these to be too strong so you know we can set the strength this fade to be somewhere around that makes it fairly nice and subtle not too much there uh, you can also use the color modul modulation will kind of adjust you know the the glare color type you can just leave that you know kind of where it's at at default we take this down uh, yeah just less good whatever uh, and I think that probably will be just fine okay so now what we need to do is we need to take both of these and combine them together so in order to do this what I want to do is I just want to add these together so it'll take all of these results and then just add them together so we're gonna grab another add node we're just gonna duplicate this and then we're gonna combine the two Let that composite and there we go so now we get the glow and the glare together to make our node setup a nice a little nicer and clean what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab each of these here I'm gonna hit control G make a group out of that and then I'll grab each of these control G make a group out of that and this group we can go in and name this will be our streaks and this one will be our glow okay there we are and next I want to do the vignette so vignettes you know fairly common um, same technique that I've used in multiple tutorials so I'm going to use it do it fairly quickly but we're basically going to just do a, a lens distortion so it'll be a uh, filter no convert no distort uh, lens distortion we'll drop that on there we'll set the, dis the distortion to be one we're then going to choose a converter and a math node which will drop into there and we're going to use this as a greater than basically I want all pixels that are greater than zero to be solid white so then it just gives me this black circle or white circle I can then blur this by using a filter and blur and again I'm going to set this to be relative so it'll compensate for the scales use the aspect ratio correction of Y and I'm going to blur this say 25 by 25 That'll give me a really nice soft blur here. And in fact, maybe that was way, oh wait, um, rather than a flat, I want to use a Gaussian blur. Or actually we can do a, a fast Gaussian. There we go, so that gives me a nice blur there. Uh, we can maybe take this down even to 20 and 20, just so we've got some kind of darker corners there. And then we are just going to multiply this times the original result. So let's grab these. I'm going to control G, group them again. And this will be my vignette. And what I want to do then is just use another multiply node to then multiply these two results together. So it'll be my vignette times my previous result. Gives me that. And you can see I now have these nice vignetted corners. Taking this down to say 0.5 will make that a lot less. But you can see that when I take this down to 0.5, I get more of the actual vignette. So what I need to do is just flip these two channels and now taking it lower will give me more of the car less vignette taking it higher strengthens the vignette okay now we're almost done here and I apologize that this is a pretty long tutorial um, but I want to do you know a couple more things now one the next thing I want to do is to go ahead 
and bring a little bit more focus to the front of the car. Right now, you'll notice that our lighting, while nice, is fairly uniform. You know, the front of the car has about the same illumination as the side of the car, which, okay, fine, whatever, but I would like to have a little bit more control over that. So what we're going to do is use that normal node that I mentioned earlier. So we're gonna hit Shift A, add in a vector and a normal. And this thing is kind of cool and scary and we don't really know what to do with it. Um, but it's very, very cool. And this is where we're gonna pull in the normal pass right here. We're just gonna drop that in there. And then I'm gonna duplicate this multiply node and I'm gonna multiply these two, re two results. Or actually, no, I'm going to multiply this result times black based on this dot. Now, that may seem confusing, but let bear with me. What this is gonna do, as soon as this composites, is now using this dot as a normal. Basically, the black edges are where it's going to add in black, and the white is going to just keep the original render. So now I can actually drag this dot like this, and you'll see that the sides of the car now darken up. Very, very cool. Okay, and basically it's using the normal pass right here to understand basically, you know, the directions of the car and the normals based on the camera. Now, I'm sure that that is probably not an accurate description, but that's the best I can do without understanding more of how it actually works. So if you can compare this result to this result, you can see that this has much, it's much more dynamic, has more contrast, and helps draw the eyes more to this area rather than not knowing where to go with the eyes. All right, now we're on to the last couple of nodes. And the last couple of nodes, one is going to be another color balance just to do some subtle tweaks. So we'll drop that on there. And on this one, um, I'm just going to barely give it a little bit of yellow right here just to help kind of strengthen the red just a little bit. Give it a little bit of blue on the gamma and the tiniest bit of blue along the lift. Now, to be perfectly honest, um, I don't honestly understand enough of what each of these are to truly understand why they do what they do, but if you're not familiar with it, such as myself, uh, I encourage you just to you know play around with each of these to see what each of them do, whereas this one you can see is really kind of affecting the overall tone of the, the image. This one then affects more the, the colors of each of the different components, and then this one affects more the actual uh, gains like the specific colors within it. So a pretty poor description. Um, I know the Bartex group of the guy that did our uh, introduction compositing tutorials and actually has something pretty awesome coming up, just so you know, uh, can definitely give you a lot more specific info on these. Uh, the guy's a genius, but unfortunately I cannot. Uh, next, we're gonna give it just the teensiest bit of lens distortion. So underneath the distort, we'll give it a lens distortion. And when I say little, I literally mean like 0 0.005 to just make it real subtle kind of around the edges here. And then lastly, I'm going to throw in a RGB curves to give me a little bit more control. So I'll do a color, RGB curves, drop it in there. And inside first the, the regular channel, uh, I'm gonna drop this down just a little bit, kind of add a little bit more contrast and then I'll balance it out by raising this up, give it a little bit of an S-curve, brighten up the highlights, darken the shadows, etc. And then underneath the red channel, I'm gonna give it just a little bit of boost, just to boost that red, just to make it pop a little bit more. And I think that, after we drop this in here, is what we will call our final image. Now, at this point, this is not really a final image because there's a couple more things that need to be done. One is the red is a little bit too pink. So I would probably adjust this final render inside Photoshop just to adjust the color a little bit, or GIMP, um, just because adjusting specific colors is a lot easier in a photo editing software than it is in Blender's compositor. Um, but you can definitely do it in here if you want it. And the other thing is you can see I've got this nasty black pixel right here that needs to be removed. Got a couple of them down here. And then if you didn't want to re-render to fix the noise around the backlight, uh, then you could kind of fix some of those areas. But there you go. There is the final result for rendering the car in Blender. I hope that you've had patience sitting through this abnormally long tutorial for only a two-part series. I know right now we're getting really, really long, definitely in over an hour. So I hope that you've enjoyed it. I hope it's been helpful. Uh, and I look forward to seeing some more car tutorials. And if you were watching, I hope that you 
Uh, and if you're interested in the citizen membership for the car, all the source files, etc., and the exclusive series, not to mention our complete interior architectural course, uh, then you know take a look back at the tutorial because there was actually a discount code hidden in the tutorial. So thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.